I also want to touch on an issue that many of you in the downstream metals industry will be aware of that needs serious and urgent attention. In August of 2015, ITAC granted ArcelorMittal a 10% tariff protection on various steel lines in an attempt to protect them from Chinese imports. The agreement reached was, however, conditional, one of them being that there would be, and I quote, no price increases for the steel products in question. However, since then, there have been four increases just in this year. So what has Minister Davies and Patel done? Absolutely nothing. They have dragged their feet, wrung their hands, and tripped over themselves to, excuse, to make excuses for AMSA at every turn, which is at odds with a statement that Minister Davies issued on the 5th of February, saying, and I quote, it is of course extremely important that tariff protection measures for primary steel producers do not result in higher steel prices being passed on to downstream steel intense, intensive manufacturing sectors. There are many individuals and analysts who suggest that we should leave the steel sector to market forces. Um, we don't share that view. Uh, steel is fundamental to South African uh, manufacturing, apart from all the value addition, it's 190,000 jobs. We are the third biggest producer of iron ore in the world, high quality iron ore. We've got massive reserves in the Waterberg. If we lose our steel production capabilities, they may never come back. So, we are setting up, and it will be set up literally in the next few weeks, a a uh, steel committee representative of industry and government departments to monitor both pricing of steel as well as investment, maintenance, uh, production uh, and other reciprocal conditionalities aimed mainly at our good friends from AMSA. And those reciprocal conditionalities will be monitored by that steel committee. There might be nothing better than a crisis to get uh, companies which in the good times did very well, but where there was a failure of investment in maintenance, in technology, in producing high-end steel products uh, and not practicing import parity pricing, the bad times might be the best time to arrive at that kind of collaborative arrangement. As part of the agreement with government, I don't think we've ever said we will not increase prices. All we said is we will not use duties to increase prices. For example, IPP landed Today, CFR Durban, uh, $440, for example, base HRC, 2.3 millimeter. Then when I price, I say, hey, I've got duties of 10%, add 10% on that, I'm now going to price it at 480. We've never done that. Even though we've not signed the fair pricing mechanism today with government, but Aslo Mittal, for the last three months, actually four months, we have priced on those principles to show our commitment. So without a signed agreement, because put it into perspective, December last year, HRC, FOB China, $272. It peaked in April, $465. Can someone tell me where we today are with that price? $353. So you can see the vagaries of China. So if you expect me to price on an IPP basis and compete, I'm not.